right, so <clears throat> as we continue to delve into our reverse engineering way of doing things, we needed to, to distribute before we factored. Likewise, when it comes to trinomials, we need to double distribute first. Now, your teacher in high school may have called this FOIL, and I absolutely, I cannot impress upon you how strongly I detest the name FOIL. FOIL stands for first outers and last, but it makes it sound like a gimmick. This is not a gimmick. This is very sound, logical, mathematical um, principle. And if you can distribute, you can double distribute. So let's show you exactly what I mean. Here are six questions for us to do. So double distribute means basically this. I'm going to cover up the three, ignore it for now. And I'm just going to distribute the X by both of these terms, the, the X and the five. So X times X, X times five. Then I'm going to ignore or cover up the first x and just distribute the positive 3 to the x and the 5. And this is what I get when I do that. x times x is x squared. x times 5 is 5x. 3 times x is 3x. And 3 times 5 is 15. Every single time you do this, you will be able to combine like terms in the middle. Kind of like a same side, same operation situation. So now the x squared can't be combined with anything because that's the only x squared term. And the 15 can't be combined with anything, but the 5x's and the 3x's, da-da, they add up to 8x's. So when I double distribute x plus 3 times x plus 5, distributing the x first times the x gets me x squared and the 5 gets me 5x. Then, ignoring the x, just distributing the 3, I get 3 times x is 3x and 3 times 5 is 15. It's called double distribute because one at a time, I distribute the first term in the binomial, then the second term, one at a time. I don't change any orders, okay? So now, let's go over and see you try number two. Go ahead. Okay, so I assume you did stop and start. If not, you can do so now. And when I do that, I get x times x is x squared. x times 2 is positive 2x's. Positive 7. I'm getting in the habit of peeking in front to remind myself when things are positive or negative, like Mr. and Mrs. Positive 7 times x is 7x, and positive 7 times 2 is 14. Those middle terms are combinable. 2x's and 7x's make 9x's. So I get x squared plus 9x plus 14. Let's do a stop and start on number 3. Go ahead. Okay, so now the first thing I want to do is distribute the x times the x and the negative 5. That gets me x squared minus 5x. Then I distribute the negative 3. Notice how I'm peaking in front. Negative 3 times x is negative 3x, and negative 3 times negative 5 is 15. Again, always combinable in the middle. When you combine, what you're really doing is adding up the terms, the like terms. So that gives me x squared minus 8x plus 15. Okay, you try number four. Okay, so first thing I do is distribute the x times the x and I get x squared. x times negative three is negative three x's. Then the negative eight times the x is negative eight x's and the negative eight times the negative three is 24. So each of those products is, just, is uh, revealed now. And we combine the terms in the middle, and that gives me x squared minus 11x plus 24. Okay, let's have you try numbers 5 and 6. Go ahead. Okay, I assume you did stop and start. So for the first one, we got x times x is x squared, x times negative 2 is negative 2x's, 9 times x is 9x's, I did the different order there, sorry, and 9 times negative 2 is negative 18. Combining them, I get x squared plus 7x minus 18. And then on number 6, um, x times x is x squared, x times 2 is 2x's, negative 9 times x is negative 9x's, negative 9 times 2 is negative 18. Combining the middle terms, I get x squared minus 7x minus 18. <clears throat> um, I don't want I want to go back to number five for a second. The only reason I could go out of order is that addition, which is what combining like terms is, is commutative. 
so the order doesn't matter. Normally order is a very big deal, but I got away with it because of the commutative property there. Okay, so what we did here was we did six problems where every single time it was a binomial multiplied by a binomial and we produced a trinomial every single time. We also only did cases where it was 1x times 1x giving us 1x squared in the front. When that happens, there are some patterns that we can see, some conclusions, some observations. Remember, ultimately, we're going to go backwards here. We're going to reverse engineer things. Ultimately, I'm going to start by giving you x squared plus 8x, and I'm going to want you to tell me the two binomials you started with. So to do that, I want to notice some observations. First off, when it comes to the binomials, and I emphasize that this is just when it's 1x squared, 3 times 5 is 15. So this last term is the product you multiply to get to the last term. Look at this one down here. Negative 3 times negative 5 is positive 15. Positive 9 times negative 2 is negative 18. So in every single case, we multiply to equal the last term. And that's the first conclusion with the AM method. You multiply to equal the last term. Next, the middle term, notice, What's 3 plus 5? It's 8. So I add to the middle term. Look over here. What's 7 plus 2? It's 9. I add to the middle term. Negative 8, negative 3 adds to negative 11. Negative 8, negative 3 multiplies to 24. So the pattern I see, not only do we always multiply to the last term, but we add to the middle term. And that's why we call it the AM method. Because you add to the middle term and you multiply to the last term. We should always first pay attention to the multiply term because it eliminates or severely reduces the number of possibilities. And then we check ourselves out by seeing if we add it to the middle term. Now, there's also a way to do this on the graphing calculator. I put it here, but we'll actually start doing it when we um, start factoring in a, in a minute. But with your graphing calculator, this is the procedure. So you may want to take a screenshot of this. You may want to take a picture of it on your phone. Um, in Y1 on your graphing calculator, that's in the Y equals button, which is all the way in the upper left-hand corner. Under Y1, you're gonna put whatever the last number is divided by X. So for instance, if I was doing number four, I would put 24 divided by X. If I was doing number six, I would put negative 18 divided by X. And then under Y2, in parentheses, mandatory that we do this in parentheses, I would put whatever that last number is divided by x. So if I was doing number four, I'd put 24 divided by x. I would close the parenthesis, and then I would put plus x. And then I look under y2 to find the middle term. So if I was doing number four, I'd look under y2 to find negative 11. That will give me the negative three and the negative eight. And I would look under the y2 on number six, and I would look for negative seven. On number five, I would look for positive seven. And you'll see like you're on number five, if you did that, what you would do is look at the first two columns. Y2 would say seven, but Y and Y1 would say, or X and Y1 would say, or the first two columns, you'll see them, will say nine and negative two. And that tells you your factors. For number three, if you looked in your calculator and you found where Y2 said negative eight, the two previous columns would say negative five and negative three. So that's how you can fill in the boxes. All right. So that is how you double distribute. And then the observations, we notice them, we will begin to apply them in just a minute.